Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, Steve's got a great show, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, very easy to get this newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You hit newsletters, you hit Mastering Probability. You're going to hit subscribe. You can get it for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You can get it for a year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. They all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Such a boring day. What are we going to talk about? It's a beautiful thing, brother. No doubt. No doubt. Hey. Yes, absolutely. Talk about volatility. And, and that's really the first place, Tom, that I thought that uh, we would start. And what I want to do is, is kind of give folks maybe a, a, a view of what to be looking at this evening. Uh, uh, and really, especially if you're an intraday trader. Um, you know, so I want to be able to do that. So to start with here, this first uh, chart or really set of data points that we're looking at, the very top portion, uh, we've got the ES Mini down 96 points right now, but the spot volatility index is what I want to focus on. And it's printing right now at 2380. And the important thing is taking a look at the spot volatility index and in all of its forward futures contracts. So here I've got uh, from March through November. And what we can see is even the furthest out contract, or in this case here, October, it's printing at 2120 in the futures contract. So we've got this backwardation. And we have this. Um, and what I like to do is I like to take a ratio between the spot volatility index and take a look at what its one-year index is uh, doing, what its three-month, what its six-month is. On this uh, bottom panel right here, Tom, this happens to be the uh, three-month version. And when, it, when there's a ratio that gets above one, that's in essence dividing the spot volatility index by its three-month counterpart out here, or vice versa. Um, when it gets above one, it's an indication of a bottom that could be forming, at least a viable bottom or a bounceable bottom. So so uh, we've got the spot volatility index trading above everything. And what I want folks to understand is that is an unusual format, and it provides us with a, at least a, a nice volatile trading opportunity or at least a very sizable counter trend rally. So that's the first thing. The second thing with regard to spot volatility index, and it's an amazing tool for us in providing us with some insight to put this together with other patterns when I take a look at trading the equity futures contracts. So here, Tom, on this chart, we're taking a look at the top panel is the S&P 500, and it has a number of blue and green arrows. And the bottom panel takes a look at the one-day rate of change of the spot volatility index, the difference between the close on Friday and the, where it's trading at right now. And if you look at the very bottom panel, you'll see it's printing at 38.93. So we've had a 38%, nearly a 39%, as we speak right now, one-day rate of change. The blue arrows in the S&P 500 are time periods where there's a one-day rate of change greater than 10%. And what we typically see in the overnight action is some type of bounce or bottom in the marketplace. So I would prefer right now just to focus on the bounce, not necessarily worried about whether it's a bottom or not. And on this chart here, if I go to other days where we've seen these high, and this is where it, it, it's so cool because what happened, what I want really, what I want folks to do is I don't want folks selling into the end of the day here um, because it just isn't supported based upon looking at these technical patterns. So for example, uh, back here on August the 5th, there was a one day rate of change of 39%. And that's right where that blue arrow is. In fact, what the market was doing right then, we can see that the S&P 500 was forming a bottom. It moved sideways, but the following day, it didn't move lower. It was an inside day out there and, and we can we can go example after example now does it work 100% of the time it does not it's in like that 90% 80 to 90% uh, category which is a wonderful thing now I go from the spot volatility index to oversold type readings out here and one of the oversold readings that I like to take a look at is the advanced decline oscillator that's a difference between the 19 and the 39 day exponential moving average of the advanced decline line and that is panel two on this chart that we're looking at when that gets down to the minus 150 you see on the bottom of my chart you'll see a yellow horizontal line when it gets down below that 150 that is true oversold territory so when I put the we're in oversold sold in a New York Stock Exchange, so the wider market out there. I take a look at the one-day rate of change with spot volatility index, and I take a look at the backwardation that we have inside the spot volatility index versus its uh, forward futures contracts. All of that sets up 
for some type of nice overnight rally out here. And I say overnight because right now we've already received the bottom signal. So unless within the next uh, 40 minutes out here, we see another push lower and take out the lows, the low is actually already in. And this is a 30 minute time frame chart. And Tom, what you and what uh, folks will, will see out here, they'll see these black diagonal lines. Now those black diagonal lines are automatically drawn by my system. There's nothing here that I'm drawing. And what they're doing is they're identifying, these are the tools uh, involved with uh, identifying what I refer to as the roads momentum indicator, top and bottom. They work for all time frames, all instruments out here. In this case here, this is showing price pushing lower with less relative energy. It's like playing a game of liar's poker, but you already know what the numbers are that you've got on your dollar bill or hundred dollar bill, what have you, versus the other person. In this case here, this is the liar's poker. This is the, this is the, this is the, like taking a ball and, and, uh, and, and, and being in a pool and pushing it down and trying to stand on it. Eventually it's going to pop up. Well, in this case here, we already have the bottom signal. Now, is it the bottom signal that tells us that we have more than just a little bit of an intraday counter trend rally right now? And the answer is no. Why no? Because price hasn't taken out any resistance yet. As you pointed out, we've seen a couple of rally attempts out here. In each of these rally attempts, I have the roads momentum indicator signals out here, but price was never able to take out resistance. So what I can do is share with folks what resistance level is right now on a 30 minute time frame. But that could change at seven and eight and nine o'clock tonight. But right now the number is 3262. And if price closes over 3262, we're going to see price move all the way up to 3294. Now we're that's 50 points from where we're at right now. That's a great trade if you can if you can uh, uh, get that on. Um, uh, so I would be watching for that in the overnight action. What's really interesting here is if I take a look at the so the ES mini has not taken out any key resistance levels, but uh, and I'm sure you would agree with me that the Russell 2000 has been a weak link out here. If we take a look at the 30 minute time frame chart for the Russell 2000, we're going to see that the last half hour bar. So at three o'clock price actually did close above the top of its profile. So here is an example of a resistance level that is attempting to crack. Now, I like to see two bar closes, whatever the time frame is, above resistance or below support to tell me about the potential of a change in trend. So in this case here, what you're watching for as we come into 330 is about 1632 or 1631.40. So a second close above that 1632 level, boy, that's suggesting a move up to 1666 in the Russell 2000 out there. And I finally put that together with all of that put together with what did the ES Mini do today? And and what the ES Mini has done thus far, I pull over the daily time frame chart, and these, Tom, are breakout levels that are based upon a tool that I use that are part of the nines, a Tom DeMarca TD9 setup out here. And they help me to identify where price is most recently broken out. And inside the ES Mini, and these lines are not drawn in by me, this is based upon the patterns out here, support is held which was 32.36, we're at 32.41. So what I want folks to be watching for overnight is some type of nice counter trend rally. And folks, real easy to get Steve's newsletter. The way you do it, come over to our website at TFNN. You're gonna go into newsletters, you're gonna see Mastering Probability, you hit subscribe, you are off to the races. You get it for a month, six months, a year, all with 30 day money back guarantee. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.